right, hymn 171. I just got told that uh, we were, we've been talking about Steve and, and um, uh, Matt going overtime in Sunday school, and now they're going to talk about me going over in choir, so uh, I'm in trouble too. So, hymn 171, a shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide. Let's stand, please, to sing. Would you open us in prayer? Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Our uh, missions letter tonight is from uh, the Sixth Family in Sweden. Uh, the letter reads, Dear Pastors, Churches, and Praying Friends, thank you for your prayers and support for our family ministry. The sun is finally beginning to shine again here in Northern Europe. Uh, winter time brings much beauty to Sweden with all the snow and pine trees, but spring weather is warmly welcomed. At the time of this writing, I am finishing up another language course. My comfort level with the Swedish language is becoming greater and greater each week. Uh, it's nice to be able to read an article without a lexicon or watch a show without paying as much attention to the subtitles or have a conversation without constantly stumbling over words. Uh, it's not perfect, but I'm about to the point in my language development that I have a pretty good grasp of the grammar and need only to increase my vocabulary and get a better grasp of the context, or in other words, how a Swede would express the same thought or idea. Uh, transliteration from English to Swedish does not necessarily correspond to a proper translation and vice versa. Uh, I believe this will come more naturally through talking and reading. We are in the process of planning an upcoming furlough. Uh, as of right now, the plan is to travel back to the United States at the end of June and stay for about one year. Uh, there are two primary reasons that we are planning a one-year furlough. We would greatly appreciate your prayers for, the, for these. Uh, one, we have been in Sweden for three years at the end of June and simply need a time away and a time to visit family supporting churches and a solid year provide ample time for this. Two, 
uh, we are unable to homeschool in Sweden, so our children are used to attending the Swedish school, which has been a blessing in many ways. However, their Swedish language is not that developed yet, and we are not sure if a Swedish school is the best option going forward. Furthermore, we do not want to switch schools midway through a school year, turning Swedish on and off and then back on. A year in the United States will provide adequate time for our children's education to be assessed. It may be that our children would, be, would fare better in English-speaking school here in Sweden. In international English school, Swedish is also taught, of course, but the school itself operates in English and the education is, is administered in English. There are only 44 of these schools in Sweden. The waiting list can be quite lengthy. Uh, please pray with us that the Lord would give us wisdom concerning our children's education and that a door is potentially open for them to attend such a school. And he uh, says, our son Laban turned seven years old on February 2nd. He is full of energy, loves to learn new things, and is just such a blessing to our family. Thank you for, our, for your prayers for our children. Uh, between now and our return to the States, we will continue to strive to steward our time faithfully and wisely. We will keep you informed as we know more about our furlough plans. So let's have a word of prayer for our uh, missionary family of the week. Our Father, we thank you for this day you bless us with. Thank you for uh, another opportunity we have to hear from one of our missionaries there in Sweden for the Sixth Family. Pray you bless them as they uh, continue to learn the language and as they prepare for their furlough coming up in a few months, that you would give them uh, guidance on what, what you would have them to do uh, with their time and as they uh, try to figure out things with their uh, children, with their schooling. Pray you'd give them wisdom and guidance there. Pray you'd use them and especially pray to be a time of great encouragement for them as they come back and see family and see supporting churches and maybe uh, gain some new supporting churches that you would bless their ministry, help them as they work there in Sweden with the people and th through learning language, for using to see uh, many people saved and see uh, uh, much fruit won for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Trust and Obey, hymn 385, hymn 385, let's once again stand please to sing.
Thank you. You may be seated. All right, let's take prayer requests tonight. Um, praying for, of course, ministry related needs, spiritual needs. Um, does anybody have a prayer request that they would like to bring to, to attention tonight? Anybody at all? Oh. Okay. That's a good prayer request. We'll pray for you specifically, but let's pray for all of us that we'd be better witnesses for our, to our neighbors. I think that's something we could all work on, probably. Who would like to pray for that? Anybody? Brother Steve. Dear Heavenly Father, we say we love you tonight for the grace that you've shown us, Lord, and Lord, we pray that each and every one of us would be expressive of that grace to our neighbors, not just some happy-go-lucky fellow, but somebody who has been changed and saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the witness that we need to show that our neighbors, that it's real in our lives. We pray that we'll have that opportunity, and, and Lord, just by <clears throat> watching us is how we live and how we deal with problems and how we grow and what we do with our time. Lord, we pray that we have the opportunity to um, talk to our neighbors and our family, especially during this time when uh, the Resurrection Day is coming up, which we celebrate, and all the other things that's happening in the world puts fear in people's lives. Lord, People can be more receptive to hearing the gospel of Jesus. And, Lord, you've left us here, and you've put us here with a purpose of that. We thank you for that opportunity, and we pray for more. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Does anybody else have a prayer request tonight? Oh, Brother Rinker. Sorry. Didn't see your hand. I just want to say my wife and I yesterday marked our, our 53rd anniversary of being children of God. March the 26th, 1969, we came to know Christ. And then I want to voice a prayer request for our co-labor ministry and um, rejoice in the progress that we've made. The, each week we have been able to accomplish a little more, and we're grateful for that. We've had some interesting experiences, um, one of them being Steve Pullen was doing some inspection work, and uh, he requested that we might print up some stickers that said, inspected by Steve Pullen, number one <laughs> inspector. <laughs> That's fact. We also learned that Brother Joe Webb does a wonderful rendition of Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> uh, one of the real, s several real joys. Uh, when Miss Betty showed up last Thursday, she said, well, the supervisor's now here. <laughs> but uh, in a And it's remarkable the real help they can be. We see them so much. And uh, we were struggling just last week with Paul Kimball, a little Paul Kimball, somebody that had an eye for it. He was inspecting the basis for that broken leg. <laughs> oh. jobs and I looked back and and uh, Brooke was setting back normally and had vacated her spot for uh, an assessment Thank you. 
that work? And If you haven't been to the, if you have a chance to come by on a Thursday morning, even if you can't stay and just to see, it's a blessing to see all these people working for the Lord. I'm, I'm very busy. I, I wish I could stay, but I'm always have meetings and stuff on Thursday morning. But um, I love popping in there and just seeing everybody uh, putting out the, putting out the, um, the books and working. Um, so continue to pray that the Lord blesses that. That'd be neat. All right, I'll pray for that one. Heavenly Father, thank you for our collating ministry. Thank you for Brother Rinker and his leadership there and the willingness of our people, Lord, to come together every Thursday morning and put Bibles together. And Lord, thank you for the blessing of having uh, Marcus and Brooke get involved. And uh, Lord, the people that you've brought, Lord, I know that there's been uh, various reasons and good reasons why people have been missing, but we pray that you'd replace uh, those people and, and continue to, bring a bring that the people that are needed to this ministry to do it and that you'd bless the people that are there with fellowship and um, bless them um, as they think on you and lord just use that time we ask this in jesus name amen all right i had a couple prayer requests on my heart they wanted to share real quick uh one of them was um the webs if you'd pray for them i know that mrs webb and, and brother webb they have her mother back or his mother back in their house. They're taking care of him for a while, her for a while. I don't know how I'm going to preach tonight. I, maybe y'all should pray for that. Um, <laughs> but if you'll pray for the webs, I know that's it's a, it's like a full-time job taking care of uh, his mother. She was in a nursing home, and now she's there, and he doesn't know how, how much longer she has. So pray that they're able to keep their strength up. And, um, and uh, yeah, so... Um, and then the other prayer request is I've been blessed by, um, we've had several visitors this last couple weeks. Uh, Thursday night at Patch Clubs, I asked Alex Corey where his friend Joshua's been. I said, you better go after Joshua and make sure he was there on Sunday. And I, never, I didn't think anything was going to happen. And Joshua showed up on Sunday morning this morning, so it was good to see him. And then Naomi brought a friend. I'm going to make... Naomi embarrassed here, but she brought a friend on Thursday night and brought her again this morning. So that was really cool. So pray that uh, that these young people that aren't in our church, I don't know if they have a home church. I don't think Joshua does, but um, pray that the Lord would work in their lives. Who wants to pray for those things? Then we can move on to the next song. Brother Matt, thanks for volunteering. Father, Lord, thank you once again for the opportunity to bring these requests uh, to you tonight, Lord. Thank you for the ones that are visiting with our church. And Heavenly Father, I pray, uh, most importantly, if they don't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, I pray that uh, they would realize that need of salvation. Lord, I pray that you be with uh, everyone in here as they have friends, family that they are going to be invited to uh, service with our church. Uh, Father, know, Lord, we pray that you would bless that special way. And the gospel will go out clearly. And that uh, folks would be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you give us in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right. In 141, he hideth my soul <clears throat> in the cleft of the rock. He hideth my soul. Let's stand, please, to sing. Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry thirsty land. He me there with his hand 
With numberless blessings, we'll sing that third and then the last. With numberless blessings, each moment I write, and filled with his fullness divine, I sing in the rapture, O glory. salvation is wonderful love I'll shout with the millions on high He hideth my soul in the cloud of a rock that shadows a dry thirsty land He hideth my life in the depths of All right. How are you tonight? Good. Good. Take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs with me tonight. Proverbs um, 13 is where we're going to start. We're going to turn around in Proverbs a lot tonight. So Proverbs chapter 13. I want to preach for a few minutes on an extremely important subject for all of us, but especially for our young people. Um, the subject of friends, friends, okay? Proverbs chapter 13, look at verse 20. It says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now, uh, Proverbs has a lot to say about friends, about who we walk with. Um, And I think it's because there's few subjects that are more important than friendship, right? Friendship is the stuff of life. All of us want to have friends. Um, I was was talking to my daughter uh, the other day about a story I read about a man that lived in the woods in Maine for 20-something years all by himself. And he went 20 years without speaking to another human being. And some of you might think, yes, that's awesome. All right? Um, But uh, the truth is God made all of us to desire friendship. There's a reason why it was written up, because that's very unusual for somebody to stay that far away from other humans. Um, God made us as social beings. And I think it's interesting. There's all kinds of ways we can look at this. If you look at the tabernacle, for instance, the tabernacle, um, it was set up to be a place where God had fellowship with man. God wanted to fellowship with man. I think of the story of um, Adam and Eve and Adam and God would fellowship in the cool of the day. Remember that? Okay. God is a social being. God desires fellowship, and God created us to desire fellowship. And it's interesting, in the New Testament, we've done these studies before. We look at all of the one another passages 
in the New Testament. There's such an emphasis placed on us being together and encouraging each other in the New Testament. Um, the early church didn't just get together to hear sermons or take the Lord's Supper. They got together for fellowship. They ate together. Um, the New Testament talks about love feasts. And every time you read love feasts, you know what those were? They were just potluck suppers. That was it. They loved each other and they challenged each other and they got together and they met in each other's homes. And in heaven, we're going to have fellowship. Um, there's going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. I don't, how many of you know this about me? Maybe you haven't realized this or not. Parties are like, every time I go to a party, it's like somebody takes a syringe and they just slowly suck out my soul. And when the par my wife will tell you this is true, right, hon? And what? What'd you say? I, at the end of the party, or long before everybody else is done, I'm just like all of my social uh, graces have been spent, and I just want to go to bed, right? I'm the person, if you came over my house, I'd be like, oh, it's so good to have you, and we would have a blast, but I'd be like, you're leaving at nine, okay? Because um, <laughs> I just, I, I, as much as I love the fellowship, uh, it can be challenging. That wasn't in my notes. Um, uh, just friendship is important. Friendship is important, and God puts it in all of us to want friendship. Um, I also believe this is true. I believe that nothing will influence you more than the friends that you choose. Uh, very few things, I'll say, will influence you more than the friends that you choose. We don't get to choose who our parents are, right? We don't get to choose where we woke up, or wh where we woke up. Where we uh, grew up, we don't get to choose. But we do choose our friends. And if you look at the proverb, again, it says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And young people, young people, more than anything, I want you to have this verse memorized because it's important. It will shape the entire course of the rest of your life. Okay? Who you choose to be your friends is like the most important decision that you could possibly make. If, if I could tattoo this on the back of your eyelids so every time you close your eyes you saw this verse, I'd do it. Okay? Actually, it probably wouldn't. That'd be kind of gross. But um, you get the idea. Um, and it's not just for kids that's important. It's, it's important for adults. It's important for married people and unmarried people alike. It's important for widows just like it's important for teenagers. All of us have to interact with other people, and all of us get to choose to some extent the people that we'll interact with, who our friends will be, and who we allow to influence us. And we need to remember... He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Now, as we're going to look at some Proverbs tonight, we're going to kind of use this verse to, to make two points. And we'll look at other Proverbs to see those two points. But the two points I want to make tonight are the wrong friends will bring you down and the right friends will bring you up. That's it. It's the two points. We're going to, there's there's sub-points, so don't get excited, all right? Um, so the first point is the wrong friends will bring you down. The wrong friends will bring you down. It says the companion of fools shall be destroyed. If you choose the wrong friends, it will impact your life in a negative way. The New Testament says, be not deceived, right? Um, Y'all, my brain just went blank. What's that verse say? Uh, be, uh, evil communications corrupt good manners. OK, uh, what's that verse talking? It? It's talking about who we hang out with. If we hang out with the wrong people, it's going to corrupt our lifestyle. The wrong friends will bring you down. Um, of course, when we're talking about friends, it's important that we we say that friends are a special class of people. This doesn't mean that you can't be friendly to people. Right. Like if there's some person that you have to work with at Burger King or something, and they, are, they, are, they check lots of boxes on the people you're not to be friends with, according to the scripture. That doesn't mean you're to treat that person like a pariah and you know, be holier than thou and, and look down on that person. Be friendly with that person. And we have, most of us have many, many acquaintances, right? 
They're people that we're sort of friendly with and we carry on a good conversation with. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's a special class of people that we make our friends, the kind of people that we, uh, we have over our house just because we want to be around them, the kind of people that we choose to fellowship with, that we choose to learn from, that we call up when we need help. And those people, who you choose to be those people, is one of your the most important decision. If you choose wrongly, it will destroy your life. Um, the scripture specifically warns us in Proverbs about different groups of people that we should avoid making friends with. And the first group is wicked people. So if you go back to Proverbs chapter 1, look at Proverbs chapter 1 and um, look at verse 15. It says, My son, walk not thou in the way with them, Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood. Um, what's it talking about? In the book of Proverbs, in this, in this chapter, and then throughout the first several chapters of Proverbs, Solomon is warning his son against falling in with wicked people. Um, and by wicked people means people that are foolish, people that don't believe in God, people that are mockers, people that get involved in here, it's robbery and looting, um, people that have loose morals, okay? And a huge part of the first part of Proverbs is Solomon warning his son to avoid wicked friends. Look at chapter 2, verse 12. It says, To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things, who leave the paths of a brightness, to walk in the ways of darkness. So, one of the biggest temptations, especially to young people, is falling in with the wrong friends. And one of the things you need to understand, young people, is that wicked friends will destroy your life. Wicked friends will destroy your life. If you choose a bunch of godless people, they might be nice, okay? They might show you attention that other people, that, that are good people, don't show you. But if you choose those people to be your close friends... They will pull you away from the Lord, and it will destroy your life. When I was a teenager, had an interesting situation. Some of you understand what this is like. Most of you do not. When I was a teenager, my parents were divorced. I spent the weekend at my dad's house. My dad is not a Christian, very hostile to Christianity, and very much encouraging me to sow my wild oats as a teenager. And then I'd go, and I lived in a very strict Christian church every time the doors were open home during the week. Went to a Christian school, strict rules, all of that, chapel every day. It was like living in two completely different worlds. And I had a very small group of people that I even had the opportunity to be friends with through the week when I was at my mom's house. But I'd go to my dad's house on the weekend and I could hang out with whoever I wanted to. And there were kids in my neighborhood that were uh, pushing me into drinking and pushing me into uh, smoking and um, being sexually active and listening to music that I knew was toxic and they were watching filth on television and talking about it and there was lots of bad influences and the poll was there. The poll was there and it's only by the grace of God that I didn't fall in more with those kids and fall into some of those sins that probably would have left scars uh, for the rest of my life, if not completely derailed the course that God had for me, okay? Your parents, ch teenagers, kids, your parents, uh, listen to them when they talk about your friends. They are not, your, your parents want you to be happy, and they want you to have friends, okay? And they're not talking, if they say, hey, watch out for that person, it's not because they're trying to ruin your social life and keep you miserable and make you a hermit from now to eternity, okay? They're doing it because they love you and they have God-given wisdom that you do not have and they see things that you do not see. Um, so listen to them. Listen to them. Be careful of wicked friends. Another group of people that we're warned not to be friends with are angry people. Look at Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 24. It 
It says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Make no friendship with an angry man. There are people that are perpetually angry. You know what I mean? Like anger is like their thing. They are always blowing up. I'll tell you a story. When I was in college, my freshman year of college, for a brief while, I dated a girl that was not Amanda. I didn't know Amanda yet. So I met an Amanda that was all over. But I, 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 uh, I dated this girl, uh, and her stepdad and her mom lived in town. And one day, we decided they, they wanted to take me and this girl, and we went on like a date with her family, okay? And we were driving through Knoxville, and some poor girl, um, it was a busy part of town, some poor girl cut over into the lane in front of us and, and stopped. She was like 17 years old or something. She was very young. And the girl I was with's dad, or stepdad, parked the car, got out of the car, and started hitting this girl's car and he's screaming at her. And here I am in the back seat and I'm like, how do I get out of here? <laughs> this is not what I thought it was. Um, that's an angry man right there, okay? Um, we might feel like that on the inside when people cut us off in traffic, but I, I've never seen any, I would hope none of you um, ever do that. Another story that I probably shouldn't tell. Um, there was this man in my church growing up, uh, his name was Bill, and he was like, how do I put this nicely? He was mousy, okay? He was like five foot five, 100 pounds. There's just nothing to this guy, right? And he was faithful in church. He was always there, him and his wife and his kids. And one day he just disappeared. And it turns out that Bill had a road rage problem and started beating on a cop car one time, and Bill wasn't in church because he was in jail. <laughs> so um, wa gotta watch out for the mousy ones. <laughs> and I feel like the, the service has been completely derailed there, so. <laughs> um, watch out for people that are perpetually angry, blowing up. It says, uh, it tells us why we need to watch out for them in verse 25. And this is interesting, it says, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. So what it's saying is if you hang around with people that are really angry or always angry, their anger will rub off on you and their anger will be a snare to your soul. That's Proverbs words. That's not my words. I wouldn't have singled out angry people for this if I was making my own Bible, but I didn't write the Bible. Good thing, right? God did. And he said, Watch out for angry people. Don't hang around them because they will be a snare to your soul. Now, I'm going to get real with you here, okay? Some of you, some of you go out of your way to invite angry people into your house every day. Some of you go out of your way to invite them into your car every time you get in it. You know what I'm talking about? Okay? Some of you are addicted to the angry people on television and the angry people on the radio and the angry people on podcast. And they've figured out that if they can keep you mad about something new every day, that you'll keep tuning in and they can keep selling razors. I'm serious. Okay? The Bible says, don't make friends with angry people. Don't make friends with angry people because you'll learn their ways and it'll be a snare to your soul. All right? So there are preachers. There are preachers on YouTube that are very, very popular. And people uh, get into the habit of watching these people and, and get into these people. And if you just stop listening to them and just hear their tone, they're angry about something different every week. And that's the attraction. All right? Don't, don't invite them in your house. They'll be a snare to your soul. So avoid friendships with angry people. Third group we should avoid are drunkards and gluttons. 
Proverbs 23, verses 20 and 21 says this. Be not amongst wine-bibbers. We need to make wine-bibbers great again, the word at least, not the wine-bibbers, but that's a cool word. Be not amongst wine-bibbers, amongst riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. So these are two sins that are put together here, being a drunkard and being a glutton. A drunkard is a person that can't control his desire for alcohol, and a glutton is a person that can't control their desire for food. And it's interesting that they're put together, okay, here in Scripture. We are to be people that practice self-control. And uh, when a person doesn't have self-control, it says that they fall into drowsiness, to laziness, to just floating through life. They don't redeem the time, as the New Testament says, redeem the time because the days are evil. They miss opportunities to serve God, and Proverbs says to avoid those people. Um, I don't know, I've preached on on drunkenness many times. I don't know if I've ever said a word about gluttony, about the lack of self-control in what we eat, Um, but it's certainly something the Bible talks about. And the Bible says that these both lead to poverty, to drowsiness. Um, And uh, I think, you know, uh, the New Testament says we're supposed to try to keep under our bodies. So we have to be careful there. Now, I don't want to belabor this point. I don't think God expects us all to be um, CrossFitters, you know, vegan eaters, I don't think God expects every man to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and every woman to look like uh, she, she you know, stepped out of Vogue magazine or something like that. Um, but I do think that we should tr- do our very best to control ourselves uh, physically and stay in control in that area, okay? And there are ditches on both ends of that road. So, he that, with, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So three groups of people to avoid, angry people, wicked people, gluttons, and drunkards. Now, um, those people will destroy you with their influence. So the Bible tells us to stay away from that. All right, now, it also says, uh, he that walketh with the wise men shall be wise. So let's look at the second thing that we're supposed to do, and that's the second point here, and that is that the right friends can bring you up. The wrong friends can bring you down. The right friends can bring you up. Proverbs 27 is where we'll be for the rest of the night here. Proverbs chapter 27. And there's several verses here that I want to point out, but we'll start in verse 17. It says, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. All right. Some of you that cook, you know that your knife is one of the most important things that you have, that chef knife. And when it's time to sharpen that chef knife, you either have a uh, sharpener thing, or you have one of those poles, those metal poles, and you scrape it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to sharpen that knife, okay? And that's what it's talking about. It's saying that good friends sharpen each other. They sharpen each other, okay? Um, They make each other better. And there are many ways that you can make your friends better. Um, and, and have friends that make you better. One of them is by example. You can have friends that inspire you by their example to be a better person and a better Christian. And you should choose friends, by the way, that inspire you to be a better person and a better Christian. Um, some of you have been sharpeners to me in my life, in the way I raise my kids. And, and uh, sometimes I will see things in some of you and be like, oh, I want to spend more time with that person so I can learn from their example. I can learn from the way that they're uh, handling their children. I've got friends, good friends that are coworkers that I love uh, spending time with them because they challenge me to be a better dad and a better husband. Okay? Pick friends that sharpen you by their example. Um, 
You know, that's a super important thing. Number two, another way that you can be sharpened by your friends is through encouragement. Look at verse 9. Uh, 27 verse 9 says, Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. <laughs> so, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. I'm sorry, my brain just went to uh, <laughs> teaching um, 9 and 10 year olds in patch clubs. And they, some of those kids need some ointment and perfume, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that would rejoice my heart, but that's not what it means there. Um, uh, what's it talking about? It's talking about, I think, encouragement, the sweetness of a friend by hearty counsel, okay? Um, sometimes, sometimes you have uh, godly friends that are just good at encouraging you. They know just when you need to hear, what time you need to hear it, and they bring encouragement. They bring encouragement. Um, Proverbs 25.11 says, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Okay? Sometimes the right word is incredibly valuable. The right word of encouragement. You ever had a, just a down day? Like you're ready to throw in the towel, you're ready to quit. And some Christian brother or some Christian sister has passed you a note or something that just says, I really appreciate you. That's happened to me so many times where I'll be like, just, I'm just tired and I'm just sick of everything and I'm just ready to throw in the towel and I'll go to my mailbox and there'll be a letter from some kid in our church or somebody that you know left our church to move out of state or something and it'll just be so encouraging and it'll be just what I need at that moment. Or somebody will say something encouraging to me at just the right time. That is, we can pick friends who encourage us, right? Now, you gotta pick friends who encourage you in the right things, okay? If you have bad habits and your friends are encouraging those bad habits, they're not being their friends right there. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about picking friends that encourage you to go to church and encourage you to serve the Lord and encourage you to read your Bible and encourage you to be a good wife or a good husband or a good child or you know, those are the kind of encouragements that we should get from our friends and when we have friends that encourage us in that way it's like iron sharpening iron it makes us better okay a third way that our friends can sharpen us and i think the main way uh intended here in proverbs is through correction correction um Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Okay? How many friends do you have that have pulled you aside and said, dude, or you're a lady, or you're older, and you don't like people talking to you about that, but my friends are all young, so this, or many of my friends are young, so this is how they would talk to me. Dude, you are way out of line. You shouldn't have talked to those people that way. Um, you are obviously having a rough day. You need to go take a day off. You know, just chill out. Um, you're way too. You're being way too harsh right now. You're being way too ugly right now. You're taking it. You're, 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 or, or on the other end, you're taking it too easy. You need to buck up and do what you're supposed to do. Okay. I don't have a whole lot of friends. That's, that talk to me like that, but I praise the Lord for every one that I do because I need those people in my life. I need the people that will say to me, hey, you, you are out of line there. You need to fix that. You are, you are harsh there. You need, to, you need to soften it down. You are way too tough on those people, okay? I need those people in my life. I need that kind of correction, and when I have friends that are close enough to me that they can give it to me, I rejoice in that. I rejoice in that. Listen, if, if your friends just tell you what you want to hear, you don't have friends. You don't. If your friends never, ever say anything that would upset you and just let you carry on in your foolishness, they're not being your real friends. I don't know what you call those people, just hangers on or something. I don't know. Um, but they're not real friends. Look at Proverbs 27, verse 6. 
Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Um, you, you need friends that can wound you sometimes. It, does, it doesn't feel good, right? It doesn't feel good to be corrected. It doesn't feel good to, to have people tell you that you're out of line. But if you're wise and you listen to it, man, it's, you appreciate that. You appreciate that. All right? We need friends, young people, everybody. We need friends. Be careful who you let influence you. Be careful who you let influence you. All right? You choose the right friends, you can go and, and fulfill everything that God has for you. You choose the wrong friends, and every one of them is like a landmine that could completely derail your life. Choose godly friends. If you have a job, uh, try to pick the godly people that are at that job to hang out with, young people, all right? Or older people, when you go to work, try to find people that you can, that you can uh, have spiritual conversations with. Choose godly friends. Choose godly friends. Super important. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. All right, I am so glad that I didn't say at the beginning of this message that that was going to be a short message. My wife said, actually it was Brother Adam said, he's one of those people that can tell, tell me things that are, you know, when I'm off. But he said, he said, every time you say it's going to be a short message, it's still 35 minutes. Every time. I was going to say it, and I didn't tonight. I'm glad I didn't. All right, let's, um, let's, let's pray, and then brother, let's stand together, and brother Harold, uh, brother Harold, brother Hedrick, come and close us in a song, please, all right? Heavenly Father, help us to choose wise, godly friends. Lord, the people that we allow to influence us, whether they're our friends um, in real life, Lord, or our friends that, that we bring into our homes via uh, the television or via the internet, um, help us to choose wise and godly people that challenge us to be better, uh, that challenge us to be more godly, um, and not people that destroy us. Lord, I especially think of our young people, think of those that are uh, just sort of uh, branching out into adulthood, and they have so many opportunities to make bad friends, to, to make friends with people that will steer them down bad paths and cause uh, scars and bad decisions that they have to live with for the rest of their life. And I pray, Lord, that they'd listen um, to the message tonight, listen to your word, and choose godly friends. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn 511. Nearer, still nearer, close to thy heart. Hymn 511.
cleansing by blood doth impart. And on the last, nearer still, nearer, while life shall last. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, for your uh, the message this evening. We uh, ask, Father, that we would be uh, careful of who we befriend, and that, Father, you would make those that are the closest to us godly people, that, Father, we could uh, talk about godly things, that we could talk about Scripture, that we could talk about you. And uh, that, Father, it would be the type of relationship where iron sharpeneth iron. We, get, uh, we ask, Father, that you would give us a great rest of the week. May we be pleasing in your sight. For it's your precious name we ask it. Amen.